Tonight, we're testing out the best ways to protect your table saw or any other cast iron tool from rust. At some point in your woodworking journey, if it hasn't happened already, you will have the nightmare moment when you look over and you see the dreaded rust spot in the middle of your flawless table saw. It's basically a woodworker's gut punch. We're gonna set up tonight on a real table saw wing what I've found to be the most common methods that are used to protect your table saw. I'm gonna test things like condensation, wear over time, humidity, and evaporation. We're also gonna do some testing on the effects of different liquids you might find in your shop. Most of the ways that people protect their saw fit into one of about four different methods. First up is the classic and probably the most common method to protect your table saw, paste wax. Now the classic paste wax that was used for many years was Johnson's, but it has since been discontinued and the cheapest I could find it on Amazon was over $100, which is ridiculous for paste wax. But really there's not a ton of difference in paste wax, so any paste wax should do. The one that I've used is the Minwax Finishing Wax in the natural color. This is what I'll be using for my tests. This is a cast iron table saw wing that I bought just for your benefit so that you can see all these different methods tested out. I'm gonna partition this off into four different sections. This wing comes coated in oil, but I'm gonna clean all that off so we can get down to the bare metal. The manufacturer's directions on this say to apply a thin even coat of paste finishing wax with a clean cloth and polish with a clean cloth. I think most people usually will apply at least two coats, so I'm gonna apply two thin coats to make sure I'm giving it a fair comparison. The next method is the one that I currently use on all my tools. This stuff is an easy method to protect your table saw surface. It consists of one coat of T9 Bow Shield, which is for rust prevention and protection, and then I apply a top coat of Glide Coat on that to reduce any friction on the surface. The third test method is a newer product called Carbon Method. This has received some high praise online, but the application is much more complex than other options. When I told them I was doing this review, they provided me with a sample kit with the understanding that I would give my honest opinion. There are four main steps with this application. First, you prep the surface with carbon cleanse, then you apply the carbon coat, ensuring complete coverage. And next, you level the carbon coat that you just applied. And finally, you buff the surface. This product also requires three to four coats because they're super thin. At the end of your coats, once they've fully cured, you spray it with Carbon Glide and then you're ready to go. The fourth product is one I'm not very familiar with, but a lot of people swear by it as their preferred method for rust prevention. It's a heavy duty rust inhibitor product called CRC336. This product is similar to a lot of other spray rust inhibitors. It's designed for more industrial applications, but it can work really well in this situation as well. Also, in case you were wondering, all of these protection methods were applied per the manufacturer's instructions. One method I decided not to test is to apply some sort of hard film coating, like a shellac or a lacquer. This can protect it temporarily, but over time this will start to peel off and you'll get streaks and lines through it and the surface won't be flat anymore because of the thickness of this hard coating. I did this once on an old bandsaw based on a recommendation from a friend and I've regretted it ever since. Now, for this comparison testing, I'm gonna conduct eight different tests of different lengths of time. And after each one, I will rate them on a scale, one being the best performing product down to four being the worst performing product. Then at the end, we'll total them all up and see who wins. The first test is the condensation and tap water test for 24 hours. These glasses had condensation and some tap water from the water inside the glass that dripped down the side. At the same time, I'm gonna do the rainwater rag test. These will both be on here for 24 hours to test each method. Now this is interesting because while every method rusted, the paste wax is the least amount of rust. For the wet rag rain test, the CRC actually handled it the best. Since the last test had rust on everything, this next one's gonna be condensation only. This test will be for 12 hours to see if a shorter time and using condensation only will make a difference in the results. Now the results on this test show carbon method coming in as first and CRC coming in in a close second. 
The next test is the shop materials test. This simulates various liquids that I would find in my shop that may get splashed or dripped onto my table saw. Wood glue is probably most common, but I added some thick CA glue, some water-based stain, and finally, just a drop of rainwater, since sometimes tools get dripped on or left outside. I will apply each of these and then try to scrape off each material to see what kind of marks they leave on the cast iron. The results of this run have carbon method coming through strong with no marks from rust and some minor marks with other materials. Now, many rust prevention tests stop here, but you're probably wondering what happens after I use my table saw for a while or cut some stuff on it. Will the rust prevention method still hold up? In order to test this effectively, I have built a machine here to test wear cycles on each of these surfaces. I've automated it with the help of a friend using this motor and a VFD, or a variable frequency drive. This controls the speed of the motor and allows me to optimize the RPMs so this thing doesn't go flying off the table. I've also connected a counter to show me exactly how many cycles have been completed in each section. At this end of the arm, there's a piece of rough, low-grade plywood, so there's some abrasion on the cast iron, with a 10-pound weight sitting on top of it. This should give us consistent results. I'm switching out the plywood coupon for each run and for each different material to make sure that we have even tests and we don't have any cross-contamination. We're going to apply 500 cycles on each section, and keep in mind that one cycle slides the board out and back, which is essentially two passes across the surface. This will simulate sliding the board over your table saw a thousand times. Once these cycles are complete, I'm going to run another 12-hour condensation test in the wear areas to see how they hold up. So we're doing the same condensation-only test for 12 hours that we did before, but now it's in the wear areas on the right side of each section. I also ran the 1.5-hour condensation test right after, so we can compare the cut marks now from the 1.5-hour to the 12-hour test. The results were the same for both of these tests, which showed CRC coming in first with the least amount of rust on both the one and a half hour and the 12 hour tests, and with the carbon method coming in a close second. Now for this next test, I'm gonna take this cast iron wing that we've already been testing with, with rust on it and other materials, and we're gonna put it into a sealed humidity chamber. I'm using a large bin with the lid taped on and two containers of hot water to create the humidity. I'm gonna be monitoring the humidity levels with a sensor inside the chamber to ensure that it's getting humid enough. And this test will be run for a full 24 hours. After I sealed the chamber, the humidity levels went up from 60% up to about 95%. And then for the rest of the test, they hovered around the 97 to 99% range. Now let's take a look to see what happened. This test definitely shows where the carbon method excels. Any rust that was there already is still there, but no new rust has formed anywhere. Each of the other sections have taken existing rust areas and amplified them, or have even developed new areas of rust in weak spots that we didn't know existed before. Now we're gonna take this testing even one step further. We're going to run every section through another 500 cycles and then do a condensation test to see how they hold up after that.
for this test, I'm just gonna get the condensation from the side of my cups and sprinkle it on both the worn areas and the not worn areas to see what we're gonna find. The results here are harder to see on camera, but the winner here is again the carbon method. There are no marks on the untreated areas and very minor evaporation lines on the worn areas. We have run this table saw wing through the gauntlet, but now we have results from eight different tests of different scenarios in different lengths of time. So now if I take those scores and I add them all together, we have the results. Coming in last place with a score of 30 is the T9 and Glide Coat combination. Now this is the most surprising to me because this is what I've been using in my shop for the last couple of years. So I may have to rethink some things. Coming in third place with a grand total of 21 points is Paste Wax. Now don't forget this is like golf scoring, so the low score wins. In second place with an impressive score of 17 is the less commonly known CRC 336. That one definitely surprised me, especially since I had not heard of it before I did this test. And the overall winner of the Table Saw Rust Prevention Competition with a final high score of 12 is the Young Carbon Method. Now I went back and looked at the table saw wing a week after conducting this test. I haven't done anything to clean it off anymore, but the only one in these areas that still looks exactly the same is the carbon method. The other ones have continued to rust and it's continued to progress and grow, but the carbon method is the same. If you are looking for the best way to protect your table saw using the testing that we just showed you, this stuff is it. Carbon method stands out in protecting from condensation, various shop liquids, humidity, and it does really well actually with wear. Now, some of the things I learned from this test is that if you leave water on your table saw overnight, it will rest no matter what protection you have on it. Wood glue and CA glue are also a bad idea on your table saw, so wipe those up as soon as you can. Also, keep in mind that carbon method is a bit more pricey than the other things we tested, but in my opinion, if it keeps your saw clean and rust free, it's worth it. However, if that is out of your budget, then the CRC336 is a good cheaper option. I do have the links for all of these products below if you're looking for something. Now, I know this didn't include all the different methods that people use to protect their table saws, so if you have one that I didn't test here, let me know in the comments what it is and tell me how frequently you have to apply it. Now, go build something and we'll see you next time.